Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Monkey in the Morning. I'm your host, The Ranting Monkey. It's a day. I don't care which. I think it's Tuesday. Hope you guys are well. Hope everybody's having a great time, a great day. Hope you enjoyed the eclipse. We're looking at a, 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 a still, well, it's not a still. It's actually the video just paused. Of the, the eclipse today as seen from space. It's just a giant darkness over America. If that's not relevant, fuck. <laughs> um i hope you guys are well i am not we're just gonna leave that at that but i'm happy and that's that's what counts um before we go on um apparently i missed anna's birthday anna this is for you anna one anna two happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday dear anna happy birthday to you happy birthday i hope you had a great one i really do Technically, it's still um, yesterday on the other side of the country, so we didn't we didn't quite miss it. But um, hi, how are you? <laughs> Hope you had a great one, guys. Um, did you guys see the eclipse? I saw people in in chat saying no, they didn't go look. I did. Uh, we were able to get some eclipse glasses, and uh, I, I watched. I was excited by it. It's it's a weird thing. I was thinking, you know, just just a few thousand years ago, not that long ago. There would have been people like sacrificing goats and stuff when this happened because they just and yes, I realize that science has been going on for a long time. But when you you think about the uh, the number of people in the world that were still in tribal living who hadn't had any kind of, you know, intelligence with the the moving of orbits and such. There are people out there not that long ago sacrificing human beings even like, oh, my God, we we messed up something we got to kill someone because the moon went in front of the sun for a little bit we've come a long way that's all i'm getting at we've come a long way it looked or i looked it was great we did not get a full eclipse here we got uh, i think our our thing was 94 percent is what they said so just at, looking at the sun from my house just the uh upper right portion of it stayed visible and then it slowly just the moon passes to the left side of the of the sun, so it looks like it's just sliding up the the one side. Um, it was cool. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. When I was a kid, way way back when, I was either in fourth, fifth, or sixth grade. I don't remember which because uh, I, I know what school I was in at the time, but I don't remember the exact grade I was in at the time. But there was a a full eclipse that came through when I lived in Virginia, and I missed it. We we had to you know, make the little viewer, everybody was making the viewers and I was sick or something. So I didn't get to see it. And it's always nagged at me just a little bit. And it's not, it's kind of weird. Cause it's one of those things like, it's just, you know, the, the rotation, it's a random thing that occurs. It kind of looks neat, but means nothing in the grand scheme of things, but it is kind of just a cool thing. And so I was glad I got to see it. Um, the next one is supposed to come along in like 20 years. I'll, I'll still be around bitching on this show. So uh, in about 20 years, guys, expect me to talk about a, about eclipses again. Until then, let's talk about stupid people. Dear Christ almighty. Um, there are so many. Why are there so many? How, how was natural selection put on pause? That's what I want to know. How did we get to a place where natural selection is like, nah, bro, I'm going to take the day off. So not long before I started the show, I was I was getting set up and doing what I normally do, um, trolling Twitter and, and uh, watching videos and all, all the kind of stuff that's going on. And inevitably, when I do this, some moron is going to speak up. It's like the gods are like, monkey needs something to talk about. Here, have this tard. And like, oh, okay. And in this case, it's about dieting. We're going to start backwards on the uh, the old headline today. A doctor, and I'm not going to give this guy's name out there. I don't know if he's a good doctor or not. I don't know if he's even actually a doctor. He's just listed as a doctor on Twitter. He came out, and I'm paraphrasing, and says that when it comes to a lot of modern diseases, and he's, he's specifically talking about uh, diabetes in this case, that you can 
you can get off of the medicines if you just deal with your hormones or, or with your diet, right? Sorry. Hormones comes up in a minute. Just, just take care of your health. Make sure you're eating properly. Stop eating so much sugar. Stop eating so many carbs. Um, stick to meats, fats, things your body burns pretty quickly and normally. What's up, Jack? How you doing, man? Don't ask. How are you? I'm, 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 I'm doing a stream, so I'm happy. Oh, good. Yeah, me too. Yay. My wife had to remind me to take Motrin because I was in so much pain and I keep forgetting to take it. How do you forget Motrin? I distracted by pain. And I, that, I know that oh. sounds stupid. No, that's, I've been there. That's legitimate. Um, but yeah, I, she, I, I'm in so much pain. She goes, have you taken Motrin? I'm like, I forgot Motrin's a thing. That's a good idea. What's Motrin? I don't have, I need to get a, a bottle for my desk cause I'm out. And if it's oh, not yeah. right beside me when I'm in, when I'm like that, I don't think to take it. How do you ward off Ethan Ralph? I just stay away. You can't, you can't stay away from the rage pig. You know that. Anyway, Jack, we're talking about um, my dietary discussion on Twitter. So oh. the the short version is that the the doctor comes out and says, "Look, if a lot of these diseases can be managed with just diet, specifically talking about uh, diabetes, Jack, but not just that." And he's he's to the point where like, look, maybe they 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 have a an incentive to keep you on medicines. And again, guys, I am incredibly paraphrasing here, and I'm not putting him out there because I don't know what he's a uh, what how good of a doctor he is, if he even is actually a doctor. And before you decide to stop taking medicines or anything, you really need to speak with your doctor. Okay. Don't take any, any medical advice from me. Why the hell would people take medical advice from us? I just have to be careful saying, because oh. we are going to talk about losing weight. Well, this, this chick pipes up and she says, um, but is that really something everybody can do? Like, what about when you your your hormones kick in and tell you you're hungry? What? I was like, ah, that's a fatty, isn't it? A fat person. I, I can't tell because she's just got a face picture, but I would guess she's at least a little overweight. But you, the point is, it, it doesn't matter if she's fat or thin. We have tons of people who take on this notion that you can't change your diet. It's become a very anti-diet thing in the country. So, oh, diets, fad diets don't work. Did you stop following the diet? Well, yeah, I lost the weight. Well, I mean, I can uh, and, uh, understand saying diets don't work because it's more of a lifestyle change. Well, we have a problem in this country where people think you can just go on a diet for a few months and lose what little weight you want and then go back to eating like the fucking pig you were that got to be the cow you were. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like the diet, diet failed me. No, you failed the diet, dipshit. I believe that's called the Amberlynn weight loss method, which is why she's like 500 pounds. Yeah. Tons of diets work. It stops working when you stop following the diet. Diet does not mean the way that what we use it for. Diet simply means what you eat. So when you go on a diet, what you're really doing is going on a new way of eating. Yeah. And then if you go back to the old way of eating, the diet didn't fail. You did. That's why I said it's a lifestyle change. If you're yeah. you can't be like vegetarian for six months and then go back to eating meat all the time, be like, I'm a vegetarian. That didn't work for me. Uh, did you really give it long enough? Is it really something you made your your uh, a commitment to? It's a long term commitment. But this woman, she says to me, Jack, well, I want you to imagine you're starving. And there's food there. Are you saying you could control yourself and not eat? That's the stupidest analogy I think I've ever heard. Yeah. Because what a lot of people say or mean when they say they're starving is, I want food. They're not actually yeah. starving. They don't even have hunger pangs. Yeah, they're just hungry. They're not even hungry half the time. And there, and it is important to point this out because if you've just eaten, like say an hour ago, and you had a decent sized meal, you're not hungry an hour later. You just want food. You want a flavor. You want a taste. You really like chocolate cake. But she's chocolate trying to make it seem like these people are. If they were starving, they wouldn't be that fat. 
it's amazing, Jack. I've seen many, many pictures of from like Dachau, right? Or mm-hmm. or Auschwitz. Yeah. Didn't see a fat motherfucker in one of those striped uniforms. No, they tend to be fairly skinny folk. It's amazing that if you limit food, you can actually lose weight. No, yeah. um, my biology is just different. My physiology and my hormone regulation is all just so out of whack. <laughs> my PCOS. <laughs> Yeah, it, well, that's that's what PCOS is. It's it's the hormones. The hormones are the problem. That's what did it see is the hormones. You just don't understand, you bigot. But the whole thing is to take any responsibility away from the people. Well, yeah, responsibility. How dare you? You you don't need to eat all the time. I understand liking to eat. I'm an eater. I enjoy food, Jack, and that's part of my problem with why I got as overweight as I did. Because I really like food, and I like bad food, Jack. I am a fat man. I understand. And she's like, could you, could you stop yourself from eating? I'm like, bitch, I lost 100 pounds. You know what I did to lose 100 pounds, Jack? Uh, cut a leg off from the no. babies? No. Oh. <laughs> Three things. One, I stopped drinking regular sodas. I switched to diet. Hmm. Two, I stopped eating a giant bowl of cereal every, literally every night. I would eat half a box of cereal, Jack. And three, I cut my portions in half. So you and stopped I lost, having fun. I lost 100 pounds in like six months. Oh Just for Could horrible. you do it? Yeah, bitch, I did it. And I didn't have to really change my diet. I had to change the amount I was eating. My, my food sources and everything were pretty much the same except for the soda. I stopped mainlining sugar, you idiot. And then somehow, Jack, that became me saying humans can't change our diet habits, which was really weird. That uh, makes zero sense. I I was I was honestly shocked at that response. I was like, wait, but you you were the one doing that. Yeah, I was the one saying you can. The fuck kind of world did I wake up in? Uh, anyway. I blame the eclipse. I do too. Um, but that's the whole dieting thing. We've been over this so many times. Um, you can lose weight. It's not going to be easy, especially if you've had a really bad habit of eating nasty shit you put, shouldn't put in your mouth anyway. Oh, I feel judged. But Look, it is possible. Anybody telling you that you can't lose weight is a liar and they're just lazy and fat. Uh, just give up, man. Just give up. Except um, being a big plumper stiltskin, start buying two airline tickets and, and riding in cargo. Cirque says Uno reverse card, right? Baxian says, I'd have to quit soda altogether, can't stand diet. I used to drink Mountain Dew. That was it. Like I drink Diet Pepsi now, only uh, I only drink Mountain Dew. And I drink I did for more than a decade, Jack. Straight Dew all the time. And I decided to go to diet, and Diet Mountain Dew tastes like it's mad at you. <laughs> yeah, because it's fucking disgusting. Fucking gross. I, anybody, I can't do Mountain Dew because it tastes like vegetable oil. Anybody who tells you Mountain Dew and Diet Mountain Dew taste alike, never take their opinion on how anything tastes ever. Yeah, their taste buds are clearly dead. But one of the big problems with switching to diet soda is the aftertaste. And the way that the way around it, if, if you're curious, for me, what worked two things um, diet Dr. Pepper, because diet Dr. Pepper tastes pretty much like a Dr. Pepper and you don't get a lot of that aftertaste, but even better, diet AW. There, uh, there was no aftertaste in that. And uh, drinking that for a little while and then going to the diet Pepsi, I didn't get the, the aftertaste from diet Pepsi anymore. So just, just a, um, a hint. I help. Yeah, I, I can't drink that shit. Um, tastes weird. Makes me feel weird. Uh, never like diet. I can't drink regular sodas anymore. They taste funny to me. Yeah, so I like the cane sugar stuff, like the Coca Colas I drink, because the it doesn't have the high fructose corn syrup, so it's not as syrupy. Uh, people says diet Dr Pepper tastes exactly like Dr Pepper. So disgusting, but still yes. If you okay. like Dr. Like, Pepper, it's a great way to make the switch. <laughs> if you don't, like barbecue sauce. 
yeah, it's going to taste just like that other shit you don't like. But anyway, uh, let's move along because we got to get to to Pearl and Fresh and Fit. Which should we do first, Jack? No, I'll I don't know. This. I'm I'm behind on most of this drama, so uh, I kind of want to save Pearl for later um, because I'm going to have so much more fun with that one than I will this one. Oh, so you're saying What's you're up? saving the damsel? What's up, Satsu? Hey, How you Satsu. Doing, my friend. Um, if you want to hang out, let me know, bro. But we'll talk about Fresh and Fit first. Uh, we've been discussing them briefly re recently. And it all blows up because Fit, or no, Fresh. Their names are Myron and Walter. I still don't know with them apart. Uh, Myron is the balding one who does most of the talking. That's that's Fit because he's he's got muscles. And then Fresh is uh, Walter, who rarely speaks up. And when he does, you understand why he's not the talker on the show. Oh, because it's stupid. Yeah. When you're the dumb one on Fresh and Fit, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> that's like a, a low nobody should ever hit. But... Walter, Mr. Fresh, uh, he knocked up a woman, Jack, reportedly. Reportedly. And we're going to watch a little part of Abin Preach's video on this because Abin Preach, they had a great video. But today, Myron came out and he defended his, his boy. Walter wasn't allowed on the show today because they were talking about this and they almost took their lawyer's advice. The other day, they had their lawyer on the show, Jack. Yeah. And he looked at him and goes, I need you to learn two words. No comment. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> no comment. And no matter what you think of the situation or these people, that should be something everybody can agree on, is that Walter, the one involved here, should shut the fuck up. And actually, his little partner should as well. They're going to get themselves thrown in jail over this, Jack. Really? Hear me out. Not bad, huh? Well, if if what they're trying to pull turns out to be what they're pulling, then yeah. So Walter's like, uh, I don't really make that much money. It's it's all in the the corporation. <laughs> the thing, guys. If you make a business, it's it's a good idea to at least make an LLC, a limited liability corporation. Mm -hmm. Um, just to protect yourself from suits and creditors and that kind of stuff. However, it doesn't mean that you can become rich and successful and put all your money into this corporation and pay yourself $30 and live the high life. Um, you're driving around in brand new cars, uh, live in large, and you're trying to pretend you're not making that much money. The government's going to go, wait a minute. We just saw this with Trump, with the Trump Corporation. Yeah. You had a whole bunch of these guys who were getting perks from the business and not claiming it as taxes. Uh, no, that wasn't actually, uh, no, we, we weren't paying him that. No, no, no. He just got to live there rent free for no reason. Uh, when, he, when he gets pulled into court for this, if this turns out to actually be his baby, and he tries to hide behind, I only make this much, they're going to ask questions about how he's living his life. And if they don't have good answers for that, all you need is a prosecutor who's bored that day <laughs> to be like, hmm, could I make an example of this guy? And I hope, we already know they don't listen to their lawyer because they've already been talking after their lawyer told them to stop What? Like, that lawyer knows what he's doing. They talk for a living. This is asinine. Anyway, um, I, I just want to... One of the things in, in the video that they made today, or it was, a, it was a live stream, Jack, they go out of their way to prove that this woman's a whore and that uh, it was never a real relationship. Oh, so defamation and admitting to solicitation. Well... That's brilliant. That's a tactic, not the one um, I would go with, but, you know. We can get to some of their evidence in a minute, but before we get to it, one of the things, I want to concentrate on that first part. They 
it was never a real relationship, Jack. Um, he's like, look, they only dated for three months. They were only actually in personal contact for like 20 days. Only 20 days. It's 20 days. Like 20 days. He repeats this over and over. Like women can't get pregnant in 20 days? Yeah, and like you can't have a, a real relationship when you got texting. It's not the fucking 1800s where you're writing letters back and forth that got across the Atlantic. Uh, there's courtship rules, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had to sit in the courtship chairs. Oh, Faithless, no, an actual whore. Uh, we'll, we'll get to it, but yes, they, they, they claim she's an actual whore, an escort. But anyway, this is from Abba and Preach's video. They did the hard work here, so I don't have to. This is our friend My or Salter Walter, the, the baby daddy. We're just gonna call him baby daddy. This is baby daddy explaining that she was never his girlfriend. If you're looking at the screen right now, what you're seeing is him talking to her, calling him his girlfriend. Or calling her his girlfriend. You be but, a good boyfriend. How old is this girl? Like 12? If I had to guess, I would say early 20. But anyway, um, she is what? Oh, my girl. Let's get that in mind. If I bring her on camera, she's not my girl. She's not my girl. You caught that, right? See, it, th that goes to the whole we're not in a real, it's not a real relationship. We never see my girl because I know what happens when you break on, on the internet. I learned from experience. That's all I'm going to say. Listen, this was a great trip. Happy to see my lovely Asian queen again. Uh, but, you know, as time passes, we must say farewells. For a short period of time until mm -hmm. she comes back. So, can't wait to see her back here in Miami. Uh, I brought her. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me think. So that's that's Myron right there. That's no. This is Walter. This is Baby Daddy. Oh, okay. I am really confused because I really don't know these guys that well. That's why we're gonna call him Baby Daddy, and the other one I'll just refer to as the other one from now and then. Okay. But this is this is Mister. She wasn't my girl. That's the girl right there, Jack. Um, that sure looked like they were together. I love you, babe. Mwah. Oh, she thanks, was buddy. <laughs> she wasn't my girl. She was never my girl. She's not my girl. Pay no attention to your eyesight and your hearing. No, see that that's just something he said to keep her on the hook. See, <laughs> he's such a little bitch. That she um, does OnlyFans for him in Romania. Yeah, it he. He wasn't on the show, but his little buddy today decided that what they really need to do is prove, one, that it wasn't a real relationship. Well, let me just be honest with you guys. It doesn't matter if it's a real relationship or not. If you knocked her up and she keeps the baby, you're on the hook, homie. Yeah. You don't have to like it. She could have told you she was on birth control and couldn't have babies anyway. She was born with a wiener. And had it cut off. If you knock her up and she has a baby, you're on the hook. Yeah. The DNA test will likely prove that it's his. Well, some, there's a funny part of this story. And this is where I really get my humor. Where I'm, I'm enjoying the shit out of this story. So when these two first start making it public that they're an item, the Fresh and Fit audience has a field day with it. Because they've found websites where she's on there as an escort. Oh, whoopsie doodle. Whoopsie. To which Fresh and Fit are like, those are all lies. She's not an escort. Jump ahead to, hey, you're, I'm having your baby. And suddenly she's an escort again. Oh, um. Uh... Is she a time traveling escort? <laughs> uh, yeah. And. On the show today, they play a clip, a, a hidden video camera clip. A what? Where she's she's kind of making a deal. Who <laughs> who is first of all, his voice is like this in the video, like he's doing a, a hostage video. Yeah. So they can hide who it is. Um, but the the guy's like I need a woman who can go for two or three hours at a time. I've been lied to before. 
Uh, all right. Um, so have you some seen... kind of sting video? <coughs> it kind of looks like it. Yeah. Um, is that called a trap bit? <laughs> it's like I mean... a secret recording of this chick having. And look, I don't know if she's actually a a whore or not. I have no clue. I don't really care. I... All that does though is prove that you pay for it, homie. Yeah, which makes him look bad because he's paying for sex it, uh, and a fake girlfriend. It's kind of pathetic. And I'm... And you're what? Cutting out? Yeah, I agree. Monkey. She's stolen his sperm. That's always a possibility. Son of a right. bitch. There you are. Yeah. Fucking Elon's out there moving his satellite so he can watch the eclipse and fucking up my internet. Yeah, he's moving him away from Brazil. So the Brazilians don't shoot him down with their Brazilian space laser. Oh, man, that stuff going on there. Oof. That's crazy. But, um, yeah, I, I just enjoy that these two idiots are being found out for the idiots that they are. Yeah, I mean, is anybody really surprised? Yes, some people really are. Oh, because some people believe in this shit. And, you know, a conversation came up on Twitter about this. And, and I just want to reiterate this point. This happens with a lot of movements. I think the red pill movement has a lot of good points. They really do. They do. Just like MRAs did. Just like, even MGTOWs had some good points. Yeah, absolutely. But it gets lost in all the hyperbole and drama. I promise to not pay ranting monkey for sex. That's a good good deal because uh, you'd be getting defrauded because I'm not giving you sex. <laughs> Just saying. Um, we have a a problem, especially in the internet age, Jack. Where when when one of these movements pops up, no matter how good it is at the beginning or how righteous it is, and I'm not saying the red pill was, but it, many different movements have have fallen to this. The people who become synonymous with it tend to be the loudest, dumbest people. Yeah. Well, we saw this with uh, some people in Gamergate, uh, Comicsgate, mm -hmm. a, a lot of movements. Uh, uh, MGTOWs, look at Sandman and those guys. You never hear uh, people talking about like One Ton Hammer. No, right. they're, they're talking about Sandman because he yeah. says stupid shit and gets noticed for it. The first time Hammer and I ever talked was because of my Sandman videos. Yeah. And my uh, Angry MGTOW videos. And he's like, we're not like... It was amazing the number of people in the Angry MGTOW videos that I made who were like, you need, a, you need to go see a real MGTOW. Somebody who's not crazy like Sandman. <laughs> and so I went and watched Sandman. And I'm like, oh my God. But they have uh, buttery juices of hypnotism in their cooters. But me and Hammer talked about it, and I agree with Hammer on a lot of stuff when it comes to the MGTOW thing. Oh, yeah. Um, or at least the problems that MGTOW has, I, and I do. But the loudest voices, the ones that get... Nobody was like, hey, go talk to Hammer. They were like, go, go listen to Sandman. Sandman's an idiot. He's a fucking lunatic. What? what? I'm shocked. Who's Hammer? The one-ton Hammer. He's on... Uh, um, Minions of the Zoo. Minions of the Zoo and on Twitter. Uh, yeah, and friend he's in of the, the audience occasionally. Yep, he's even been on the show several times. Yeah. It's been a while since we've had him on, but um, that's mostly timing. So, yeah, he's a good guy. Really good guy. Yeah, nice guy. We disagree with stuff from time to time, and that's uh, fine. That's everybody. You know, you're going to disagree who's, with your friends. Who's Sandman? Oh, my God. Oh, oh dear. I, f I feel so old right now. MGTOW, Men Going Their Own Way, was a kind of popular movement there for half a minute on the internet. And Sandman was one of their biggest proponents here on YouTube. He still makes content, or at least last I checked on him. Um, he got brought up to me maybe a year ago, Jack, and I looked in. Uh, he's still out there, and he believes that women are just crazy bitches who do things like sneak into your room while you're sleeping and hump you so they can get pregnant and you'll never even know about it which they by the way you need speed. you need to have the nerves in your penis checked if that's happening literally they will hijack your sperm while you're sleeping 
Yes. Uh, like a succubus. Um, he he believes that women can infect your soul through their vagina juices. Uh, it hypnotize you with their, their cooter fluids. And uh, you can tell which ones are going to try to do it because they have a buttery smell as you're sitting at the mall. He said he's sitting at the mall and, and these girls are walking by him. He's talking about girls. I'm not. It was very creepy to me the way he said it. Yeah. Uh, and he could smell their buttery vaginas. By the way, you can get a buttery vagina smell and it means you need to go see a doctor. That's that's a reality. There's certain uh, creepy dude at the malls like I can smell your buttery cut. <laughs> the, he's he was a piece of work and uh, I enjoyed my my videos that I made on him. Anyway, Jack, now we got to talk about the other red pill monster in the room. Pearly. Oh my god. This is why I labeled the thumbnail I stand corrected because I didn't think she could get dumber. I I literally didn't. I was like, there's there's a floor there, right? And I stand corrected. This woman is even dumber than I thought. Wow. So, yeah, this says on the screen, the Manosphere's first lady. This is from the Fearless show uh, on The Blaze. We, we already watched a clip from this. I never went and watched the whole thing, and I probably am going to have to now because Jesus Christ. But this is from like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, something like that. And this clip was brought to my attention. <sighs> Strap in, folks. It's it's pearly thinking time. You mentioned you were raised Catholic. Mm -hmm. Do you still consider yourself a Catholic? Do you consider yourself a Christian? No, I'll tell you. Okay, I want to stop right there because that's a that's a fine question to ask. Do you still consider yourself a Catholic or a Christian? And there's many ways that you would answer that with like, no, um, this happened and it made me rethink things, right? Yeah, or I like hedonism. You know? <sighs> I was not ready for the dumbness that, was, that comes out of this lady's mouth. Thank you, Keeper Dam. Men and women also do what's called coupling, where the man puts his wiener in a woman for 15 minutes, according to Sandman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like uh, hooking trains up. Uh, Sandman is not a smart guy. He's just not. He does have some hilarious analogies, though. Like, I can smell their buttery vaginas. <laughs> if you if you watch him for the humor value, it's definitely worth it. Yeah. He had a lot of clips. Him and Angry Big Tao both. I, there, were, there were some clips I would love to have on a soundboard. Because they said some crazy stuff. <laughs> they were insane, man. But again, the loudest, dumbest voices are the ones that get heard, like our Manosphere's first lady here. Does this say about the Manosphere that their first lady ain't married? Nothing good, quite honestly. All right. But anyway, let's let's hear her answer. Do you still consider yourself a Catholic? Do you consider yourself a Christian? No, I'll tell you what. I've recently... I, I would consider, I would have said yes to that maybe like a month ago or mo two months ago, but I've recently started reconsidering Catholicism and the reason being is that. Wait, I, I, I have to, have you seen this, Jack? I, I've seen it like a, a little snippet of it. I saw her response. I oh, it. damn it. Cause I was going to have you guess what her reasoning was. Oh, no, oh, um, I did see that. I saw that on the Twitter machine when I was on my way home. If you guys have not seen this, take your guess on why she's decided to rethink Catholicism. Again, there's nothing wrong with rethinking it. There's nothing wrong with rethinking any of your beliefs, Jack. It's, it's just kind of insane. And I'd like to say this is not definitive. I, I don't. I've noticed patterns in society and in history. No, you haven't. You're not smart enough to notice patterns. I just need to put that out there. Well, she notices the patterns that other people explain, and then she uses. <laughs> Does that count? I really want to know where she got this theory from, because I know she's not even smart enough to come up with something this dumb. Here we go. 
And one pattern I've noticed is that we tend to elevate women higher than they should be and say they're more special and awesome than we, they are. And recently I've had the thought wondering if the Catholic Church did that with Mary. She, she's questioning Catholicism b because of the red pill, Jack. Uh, she, yeah. Uh, they uh, they put are... Mary on a pussy pedestal. So, <laughs> Yes. That, that was actually one of the complaints by some of the Protestant movements early on was that they, there was a sort of worship of the saints and Mary. And they were treating them, uh, you know, because you, you offer prayers to them. Yeah. They were saying that's uh idolatry because you're worshiping another god um so from that and, aspect i, I could kind of get where she's going but that's not but, what she's talking about no it's not and again if, if if that was the thinking i understand it and there were several yeah. people who came to her defense in that manner i'm like that is not what she's saying she's saying she is questioning the catholic church's teachings because of modern day feminism because yes, of, of the, putting women on a pedestal today. The what, 2,000 year history of uh, Catholicism, nearly. And uh, that's that's what where you're going with this, really, bitch? I noticed patterns that yesterday I saw this woman be treated really nicely. And I thought, man, maybe the Catholic Church is wrong for being nice to Mary. <laughs> like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Uh, she's dumber, dumber than I thought. Look, at I, least she was able to impress you. Oh man, man, it was impressive how dumb that was. But it, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> Keep her damn tight down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Later, new. Um, but I, I'm not sure. So. I, I still go to Catholic church now, but it's kind of, I can't really get that thought out of my mind recently. She actually used the word thought there. Um, yeah. Here's what you need to do, Pearl. Go, go up to your priest and ask him why he's got Mary on a pussy pedestal. I dare you. Yeah, be like, why do you worship women? Why are you putting her on a pedestal? They'd be like, you're not very Catholic. Are you a Methodist? This is a chick who, This is a chick who claims everybody's just mean to me and thinks I hate women. You want to know why my family is Methodist? They got tired of standing up and kneeling. Oh man, you ever been to Catholic services, guys? Oh, yes. I was in a Catholic wedding. It was four hours long. And that my, priest when, spoke slowly, I'm pretty sure. When my grandfather died, it was a Catholic service, and fuck. Ooh, ooh, yeah, Catholic funerals, Catholic weddings. Regular service is bad enough, but... God, it, it went on then forever. Then you get the whole thing in there, and oh my God, I, I start nodding off. Because, you know, you got the sun coming in through those pretty windows, so it's like a calliope of colors on you, and you're kind of warm because of the sun, and, you got these pretty colors. And there's some guy droning on in monotone. Next thing you know, you're snoring and everybody's judging you for it. Again, I don't have a problem with people questioning their beliefs or stuff. But if what led you to think maybe Catholicism is wrong is modern day feminism, you're just an idiot. Yeah, they were venerating the saints and Mary well before um, modern feminism was a thought in some lesbian's eye. I swear, swear Pearly doesn't listen to what she says. Well, you're you're wrong about that because most of what she says is taken from other people, so she already listened to it. Uh, yeah. she doesn't understand what she says. But sometimes That's, the translation's a little off. Like she, the the message is lost in the process. She can. It's so funny watching her. Anytime she gets in debates, she cannot hold her own because. She doesn't understand the arguments she's making. Yeah. She's, again, loud and stupid, so she gets to go on Piers Morgan, Jack. Loud and stupid will do wonders for you in this world. It really will. It's short term, usually. Speaking of that, did you see Piers Morgan when he had on um, 
oh, what's his name? Nerdrotic and uh, uh, fuck, Critical Drinker. That's his name. I saw the clip going around, but I haven't watched it. I haven't had time. Uh, uh, like today, I was busy from getting up till I got here. They, Piers made a mistake, in my opinion, because he had three people on on one side and then just the one person on the other. And you know how when, when you have like a debate kind of thing like that, the people will talk over each other and it's like, ah, fuck. Yeah. It's even more annoying when it's people on the own side on, on the same side talking over each other. Ugh. Um, so it the stuff they say is fine. I, I don't have a problem with it except for the the little guy who's defending cancel culture. Um, but yeah, they just kept stepping on each other and like ugh, too many personalities at one time. But yeah, the uh, their their discussion was about the fall of Disney, basically. Ah. Uh. And Disney is sucking. There's no getting around that. But there's been this modern push, and by modern, I mean within the last probably six months, of people trying to convince you that actually, actually, wokeness has been helping companies. Companies who embrace wokeness. There was there was a thing just the other day. Some um, producer was like, companies who go woke don't go broke. They actually do very, very well. What? Uh, according to the DEI and HR department. Um, the ones who stay away from that shit do much, much better. And her argument was that there, there's massive audiences for what, what's called woke culture movies. And if you're looking at something like the Star Wars movies, even the, the MCU, some. Yeah, but those have preset fan bases already. Yes. Yes. So that's a terrible way to measure that. And they might be large audiences, but the audiences aren't purchasing the things being sold. They just cheer for it on Twitter. So it's not really an audience. Jack, you're a nerd. Yeah. Th- You've been a you. nerd for a long, long time. I have. When you were growing up, how many of your friends uh, talked about the Star Wars movies? Uh, I mean, it would get mentioned every now and then. But... Did you play with the toys? I had a lot of the toys. When was the last time you saw a kid playing with with a Ray toy? Or even heard of it? I've never seen a kid play with a Ray toy or heard of it. There there was a a shift in in how Star Wars was directing itself. And it starts with the prequels. It really does. With, with L. Ron Jesus as Anakin Skywalker. Mm-hmm. And... The movies you don't hear people talk about. Oh, that's one of my favorite movies ever. Because they're just garbage. Because they're all being written with an agenda rather than with a story. Uh, you can spread an agenda, but you do it with a story. Real quick, put a pin in that for a second. Uh, thank you, Evolve Potato. Pearl is one of those people that can't separate their fetishes from her life. Like, I wholeheartedly believe she has a humiliation kink with misogyny. And she just wants that all the time. That that is possible. That's actually a pretty good theory. I think she's just dumb, honestly. Oh, well, she might be both. Uh, she, like she's dumb, but it, she very much is, she's a crass instinct just on the other side. She understands the grip. She doesn't understand what she's saying. Hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. I I don't know. Uh, I think she's a very complicated dummy. Uh, but what, like what you're saying, one of the things they did shift with the Star Wars culture is they tried to appeal to the adults yes. more than the kids. Like you saw it after the prequels, because the prequels had a lot of toys, and they saw that adults were buying them as well as the kids, and, and f- to some degree, the, the adults were buying more of the toys. So, the, like they had Power of the Force, where they made everybody really buff and stuff like that. They had those toy lines which were very successful and then the um uh phantom menace stuff was pretty successful so they turned a bunch of that shit out and they saw adults and kids buying it well they decided to steer more toward the adult market with the sequels and that's really kind of what tanked the the collectibles market of it is it wasn't accessible to kids anymore there were no like three four dollar figures they were like if you go into a store now, it's eleven ninety nine for a Kenner type figure, like we had when we were kids. Real quick, let me get this dog backwards in chat. Says, "Come on, monkey." The geographical delay factor played a role. Isn't Pierce based in Australia? No, he's in England. 
but the the having three people on one side of the argument and just one on the other, especially if you have to deal with something like delays, that is just bad planning on Pierce's part. He shouldn't have had more than two people most on one side, especially with only one on the other. Yeah, that's that's not very productive. Yeah. That doesn't mean it wasn't like I said, the, the conversation was fine when it was happening, but that just kept annoying the shit out of me. When it comes to like the original Star Wars, I don't think it was necessarily aimed at kids. It was it was a fun movie. It was um an adventure. Yeah, but the the toy line was the toy line was for kids. They yeah. had a lot of they realized that there was a market for the kids with this. So they had toys, they had comic books, they had costumes. Uh, all sorts of accessory shit you could get. They t-shirts. They branded everything with it. But and, they, one of the reasons they branded everything with it is is how well it was selling to begin with. Yeah, yeah. And, and they took Lucas, the opposite approach later on. Lucas famously takes less money from making the movie to get a portion of the uh, the merchandising. He took all the merchandising. Yeah, yeah. And that's what really Star Wars itself, the movies did not make him a rich man. The merchandise did. Yeah. He made just boohoo bucks on that shit. I don't necessarily have a problem with the, I guess it's the kind of toys because very much like the comic book market did when they realized people were, when I bought a Star Wars toy as a kid, I wasn't thinking, I'm going to save this and get rich when I'm older. Yeah. But 20 years later, people are getting rich from it. And so they're like, oh, my God, you know what we should do? We should purposefully make this a collectibles market rather than a toy market. Yeah, which is steering it toward adults instead yes. of kids. Yes. It's no longer a toy. Now it's a collectible. It's a collectible. And that market has fallen apart because they've oversaturated, first of all. And second of all, a lot of people aren't going to see the new stuff because they're not interested in it because it turned out to be garbage. When you shit out a product, no one wants to see it. And even kids didn't really like it. With Star Wars, when when we're talking about the movies, the, the, the actual Star Wars movies, not the uh, Rogue One, not uh, Solo, not those, just the actual, this is part of the saga. They did well in the theater. But not the same way that the original Star Wars did where it became a thing where, I don't know where you live, Jack, but where we live, every year CBS played it and they would stream mm-hmm. it, at, or well, not stream, sorry, radio play it at the same time. So you could turn on your radio and have it in stereo before stereo was really a thing most people had. Yeah. And yeah. it was a big event every year. You heard any of that kind of shit since? Uh, not really. I mean, um, for a little while, USA was doing the original trilogy on um, USA, and the, the original the, trilogy uh, Thanksgiving. The original trilogy still does well. Yeah, but you don't really see them do events for the prequels and sequels. No, because people go to see these movies as the event movie, and then they forget them. Yeah, like yeah, I saw that. How was it? Uh, it was all right. I think I uh. I don't remember. Yeah, Avatar did that. It was oh, it's the biggest thing ever. I was it's an event. You have to see and then nobody fucking talked about it anymore. And that sequel tanked. I've seen the original Star Wars so many times I I can't count it. I've seen The Force Awakens twice. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I can actually tell you how many times I've seen it. And the only reason I've seen it two times is because there were parts of it the first time where I got distracted and I wanted to watch the whole thing. And, and it was and then, fine for what it uh, was, but it it did not motivate. I, I wasn't like, oh, this is so cool. I got annoyed almost immediately when she jumps in the Millennium Falcon and can drive it after she's been flying a Zippo lighter the whole time. I was like, ha, wait, huh? And this is before anybody's out there going, oh, this is woke nonsense or anything like that. That was just my common sense. Went, wait a minute. Her ship to this point, it, it's literally just a big lighter on its side, Jack. Or sorry, yeah. a, a Zippo lighter on its side. Yeah, it looks like a Zippo. Looks like a Zippo. And she's flying that, and suddenly she can perfectly, f- not just fly the Millennium Fog, but almost perfectly. She flies it through canyons and shit. Yeah. I'm like, that makes no sense. They established that Luke is a good pilot in the original movie. When they go, we can almost buy our own ship for that. Yeah, who's going to fly it? You? You're right. I, 
I'm not such a bad pilot myself. They laid no, out already. They they mentioned how he was shooting swamp rats too mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. They they build the the character through references and dialogue uh, so that you know a little bit about it without having to go into some boring detailed backstory recap all the time. And we don't even get that. We just get this chick who can barely make any money stealing scrap to suddenly flying the Millennium Falcon with no issue. Oh, well, she's the best ever. The best. Of, yeah. And it just ruins the whole thing. And we see this over and over. You have these movies that do this well. And you go, oh, well, Disney's not really doing that well. These people are coming out to see it. Only some of them. Jack, what was uh, Disney's last animated movie? Was that Encanto? No, they just had another one, didn't oh, they? Oh, really? There have been I like four of their movies that have come out recently that I could not tell you the name of. I've heard them once and like, wait, what is that? And I look it up and like, oh, it's a Disney movie. I only remembered Encanto because I saw a color Wish. book for the dollar store. <laughs> Thank you, Wish. That's the, the latest Wish. one. Oh, uh, I don't care about their animated movies anymore. They're not interesting. They're just tepid at best. They don't look interesting. They don't have well, that epic sense of adventure you know like you see the ad for uh tarzan or hercules or lion king and you're like that looks fun or you know, even aladdin uh but the new stuff it's like eh, it looks like a little lecture if we look at something like um captain marvel it made a billion dollars see this stuff isn't do you know how much the marbles made it wasn't a lot 206 million. It didn't even earn back its budget, really. Yeah. yeah I, knew, I knew that. Uh, what are their other movies just tanked recently, too? Oh, Indiana Jones. The Indiana the Jones one. Movie. Yeah. Like, we got to have a chick in here. This South Park thing is real. Switch it out with a chick and make her gay. That's that is Hollywood right now. And it's biting them in the ass because nobody wants to see that. Well, people will watch movies. You have to pair, uh, point this out as always. People will watch female heroes, but they have to earn it. They can't just go in and walk in and be like, I'm the best this ever, because that's boring. Well, it, it's the same even with men. I mean, if you look at something like, uh, take Jason Bourne, right? Jason Bourne, this badass who can kill you with a pen while you got a Uzi. But they establish that he is the best of these trained assassins. It, it's not just that he's a dude who can do everything. Uh, the Reacher series that I love. Reacher's basically a godlike figure in, in, in modern mythos, right? Mm -hmm. But it's because of the training that he's had. It's not just that he was born that way. All of this has to be earned. It doesn't matter if it's male or female. We don't talk about bad male heroes either because we're allowed to hate them. Yeah. We're allowed to go, that's fucking stupid. Let's not do that. Well, they want you to hate men anyway, so. But now, now, it's like, no, you guys just don't like the women. No, Pearl doesn't like women. I don't like bad stories. I don't like lazy stories either, because that's what a lot of these are. They're not just bad. They're lazy on top of being bad. You can have a bad movie where they put the effort in. And it, just, it just didn't work. Uh, Atheist Icon says, but they're making male characters and reskinning them as females. Uh, they're just making bad characters. It, uh, as I said, it doesn't matter if they're male or female. Ghostbusters 2016 would not have been good if it was exactly the same, but the original cast was in it. It would have been a shit movie. Yeah, it would have been worse than Dr. Detroit. But what they're relying on is that, hey, it's a woman, so you still have to watch it. And you have to like it because yeah. these are women comedians, so they're automatically funny and smart. Many of you are not old enough to remember this, but if you go back to when the second Ghostbusters come, comes out, there's a lot of fans who are like, this movie's not very good. This it's It did not live up to the original. And, and instead of having a conversation about, oh, you just don't like men, the conversation was, yeah, most sequels suck. Because we used to just understand that. Because it's hard to live up to, especially back then when you're not talking about event movies really being a thing yet. When Ghostbusters comes out, it's an event movie, but we didn't really call them event movies then. Yeah. You had movies that would do well because people like them. Now you have, this is an event movie, you have to go see it. 
And it was much better the other way, first of all, because they had a lot more creativity. But these days, it's it's all about getting a message out there. You can get your message out there, but you have to tell it in a decent story. Yeah. Uh, I respect effort more than I do propaganda. Yeah, absolutely. Look, it, a lot of the 80s movies that I love are fucking stupid, Jack. But they told yeah. a decent enough story. You can suspend your disbelief and enjoy it. Did you ever see the movie Summer School with Mark Harmon? I love Summer School. Yeah, it's a stupid fucking movie, but man, it's fun. The it, guy it, at the end who so comes fun. back because uh, he went to the bathroom in, at the very first day. Yeah. I, I fucking love that movie. Plus it had Courtney, what's her name in it when she was still cute? Yeah, Courtney Thorne Smith. Yeah. That, that, that movie was uh, excellent. That also um, has the guy who was he did a lot of those 80s kind of movies he did like um i'm I'm trying to think of other movies that he was in but the the main screw off kid in that one he's in the ski episode of it's always sunny in philadelphia yeah 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 i i I forgot he existed until i saw that episode like oh shit i remember and it made me think of summer school that's one thing i loved about the 80s was um in the movies, you would see people and recognize them from like 30 different things. Yeah. And every now and then that was annoying, but more often than not, you'd be like, it's that guy. I remember him. Wasn't it the 90s that coined the term, they coined the term summer blockbuster? I I don't remember where it comes from. I want to say it comes from the 80s, but it didn't become a, become a thing they were actually trying to do. It's kind of weird because everybody wanted their movie to do well. But if you look at some of the movies that did well and blew up, something like Footloose. Footloose, as much as I love the movie, I am perfectly willing to tell you that is a goddamn dumb movie. On paper, even, it's a dumb movie. What carried Footloose really was its soundtrack. Um, And it makes Kevin Bacon a a star, even though he, he'd he been acting for a while and had done... I mean, he's, he was in fucking Animal House, for Christ's sake. Yeah. Um. Uh- You had these, you had, and and it's weird that it doesn't happen now because it should happen more. Word of mouth turned these movies into blockbusters rather than this is a blockbuster. Please come see it. Yeah. Uh, The trailers would get people talking because you didn't have the internet. And then people would uh, go see it and tell all their friends to immediately go see it. The first summer blockbuster though, Jaws, 1975. Oh, there you go. And it's probably around that time that blockbusters become a thing, whether we called them that or not, because you you have Rocky, you have Star Wars. Um, what what else? Uh, Godfather in this time period. Uh, Saturday Night Fever. Saturday Night Fever. Yeah, t- I mean, we can see where it really starts and, and have flash dances mentioned in, in chat there. Yeah. Um, none of these movies were promoted as everybody needs to go see this. It was everybody was going to see it. Because their friend went and saw it and really liked it. And yeah. I mean, you yeah. did have a little bit of it with the the movie reviewers like Siskel and Ebert. And oh God, who's that really boring guy? That narrowed it down. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. I can't think of his name. But it, it was a guy who did it himself. Um, there were two shows movie you could Bob? watch. <laughs> no. There were two shows when I was a kid you could watch. It was Siskel and Ebert and this other one. About movies, and I don't remember the other guy's name. He was born. Yeah, famous blockbusters was ticket sales, not the budget. So yes, they started yes. pumping the budgets up to try and get blockbusters. Gene Shalit, thank was, you. Oh, sorry, yeah, Gene Shalit's shit. Uh, but blockbusters were always spread by word of mouth, and then people going to see it because there were yes. a lot of them, like Taxi Driver. Oh yeah, that was not a big budget film. Even Star Wars was pretty low budget for its time. The if you, I think it was a critical drinker who went through and did a, a comparison of how much movies cost versus the the mo- more modern day retellings of them. Yeah, and and even adjusted for inflation, Star Wars would be a very limited budget today, and most of it still holds up, even the original version of it. It's yeah. a little bit wonky with like the um when the ships the the X wings are going to the Death Star, you can see them kind of bouncing oh. just a little bit. To be fair, that is more of um, the high definition TVs. You can sure. see a lot of the flaws in the frames and stuff like that. 
So, so you can it, see more of the superimposing than you would have been able to even on a movie screen back then. How much of Star Wars to fix that? How much of that would actually have to be done computerized? Most of the the practical effects they did still hold up just fine. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, the camera coming in over the model uh, as the Death Star run takes, you wouldn't have to do that on a computer because it looks fine. So you could still you could make Star Wars bump up the budget by ten million dollars to get the the actual computer stuff needed excuse me and still make that movie and make a good movie yeah but today they rely too much on special effects for the i love spectacle jack i i I really do i like watching but but no we need to know the end of that but ghostbusters effects hold up pretty good i think so i think they still look really good trash but oh, it was beautiful. That, that you, you were gone for most of Oh, I'm sorry. I said, I'm calling out the people who, who like the original Star Trek movie, like Undoomed. Oh. <laughs> if all I cared about was spectacle, it's there in that movie. Yeah. It's well, a beautiful movie. It's just stupid. I, the same could be said with 2001. like That oh, first God. hour where it's just a concert with vi- <sighs> visuals. Look, it's very pretty. And for the time, it was very well done. But you could cut that movie down significantly and it would be better for it. Star Trek has yeah. the exact same problem. Star Trek the motion picture should have been an hour-long episode. Yeah, yeah. You could have padded it to an hour and a half maybe, but it's it's probably an hour too long as it is. Yeah, yeah. I would and... say at least 30 minutes. But it's not a bad movie. It's just I don't need to see 30 minutes of the exterior of the Enterprise. Yeah, the, the the opening or the first time you see the Enterprise where they do the really slow pan from the back to the front. Yeah. By the end of it, I was like, I don't even care about this fucking ship anymore. You, you, you could do a quicker flyby of it and cut out five minutes right there. But yeah. even we, we used to be able to point out things like that and go, no, this is this is stupid. These days, if you criticize it, especially if there's a woman and it's got to have a woman in it because you got your... Bird gall. What what's that test called to make sure women have fifty percent of the speaking? The Bechdel test. Bechdel test. Thank you. If it's got a woman in it and you don't like something about it, it just means you don't like women. No, it's a shitty movie. Stop pushing shitty movies on people, and you won't have that problem. And whatever. You just don't like the female protagonist. Everybody's favorite example is, of course, Aliens. But there's tons of females who've been in movies, even smart women who are smarter than the guys in the movie. It, it's yeah. not a, but they earned it. It was, it wasn't just because they're women. Yeah. Well, look at pretty much every '80s horror film where you mm-hmm. have the final girl. Yep. It's the horror genre is almost entirely women, especially now. So. Yeah, I mean, you had your scream queens back in the day, you know, your Lena Quigleys and and Breaky Stevens, but uh, and Jewel Shepard and all those guys for the low budget stuff. But they were still their characters were survivors. They were smart. They were rel- resourceful, reliable people, and they managed to generally uh, survive. But you didn't really talk about that because it was just sort of a given that that's part of the genre. And the feminists don't like that pointed out because. You know, sometimes I have a premarital sex. I don't know. Um, I'd argue that Star Trek Voyager could have cut out the sea monkey character and still would have been trash. I'd agree yes. from what I've seen of it. Yes. Uh, the writing the... on that show was garbage. It's just that the sea monkey really upsets Jack. <laughs> he does. I fucking hate the sea monkey. Uh, I will just... Look, the actor I'm sure is a really nice guy. Everybody speaks highly of him. But I cannot stand fucking Neelix. He ruined that show for me. As soon as he introduced him, I'm like, this is fucking dumb. I don't want to see a gay well, sea monkey wandering around the ship being useless. We, we, Since we're talking about this, and I'm glad you brought that up, I do think a lot of times people go after actors and actresses uh, for roles that they're in mm-hmm. where just leave the actor alone. They're doing their job. They took a shitty job. You worked at Walmart. Nobody's fucking with you about that. Leave people yeah. alone. Now... 
The exception to that is people like Snow White. What's her name? Um, uh, Rachel something. Yeah, Rachel, I don't give a shit. If they're out there talking shit, then they, they deserve the pushback they get. But a lot of times, like the, the chick who played, um, oh, fuck, what's her name? The little Asian girl in the latest two Star Wars movies. Um, oh, I don't remember her name. Fuck. The fat little frumpy one. Yeah, well, she's not even fat or frumpy. They just made her look like a potato. True. They made her look fat and frumpy. Yeah. Um, people went out. She wasn't out there pushing this shit. She just took a job. Leave her alone. Do you know how many bad movies Sam Jackson and Kevin Bacon have been in? Like exceptionally bad movies? Like Snakes on a Plane? How could you say such things? It's because they're working actors and they thought, like, right, it's a job. I'll go do it. And then they do their best. Hey, fuck. Um, Raul Julia in Street Fighter, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. That movie's trash. Yeah, that movie is really bad. Even by my standards, that movie's bad. And he's an excellent actor. And there's no, I, I rest in peace. There would be no reason if that came out today and he were still alive to come out and go bash him for being in a bad movie. I mean, have a little fun with it, sure. But people yeah. are like, vicious about it leave them rose thank you that's her name rose uh, kelly Ma kelly murray tran thank you chris uh kelly murray tran playing rose in star trek or star wars it, it was the, the the amount of hate that she got was wrong you know who you should have been mad at the fucking writer and director yeah like there are elements of bad movies that are fun um, just, just like, I don't hate every episode of Star Trek Voyager, just most of the ones with, uh, Captain Janeway and the sea monkey. Um, but sometimes you just have to acknowledge that something isn't good. And the Street Fighter movie, the Super Mario Brothers movies, almost every video game movie, let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, they're mostly crap and sometimes they're fun crap. Other times it's just crap. Yeah, the Mario Brothers movie, uh, Bob Hoskins was brought up uh, again. May he rest in peace. Um, yeah. I, I love Bob Hoskins. He's a he's a was a good actor. Was yeah. But that movie is straight trash. But that's one that's fun because it is so trash. But they take it seriously. Um, I yeah. have enjoyed watching it over the years. Every now and then. That that's why there are. There are movies that are garbage, but as long as the cast is taking it seriously, they can be fun. Yeah. Especially to make fun of. But it's when they're self-aware, it loses a lot of that luster. That's why the Sharknado movies, I don't think, are going to hold up quite as well. Because they're self-aware of the low budget and they're in on the joke. When they're not acting like they're in on the joke, that makes it more fun. Just watched the Adams Family movie with my girl a week or two ago. Raul Julia was awesome in it. He was a good actor. He was. Yeah. Yeah. The first movie is a lot of fun. The second one is a little different on. I'm not a big Adams Family fan. I, I I'm more Munsters. Uh yeah. We watched they used to play them back to back when I was a kid on one of the channels. So mm -hmm. uh we'd watch them both. And I liked them both equally well, but they're different types of comedy. Yeah. One's more slapstick, one's witty dialogue. It's like the difference between the Three Stooges and the Marx Brothers. Yes. And I, I, I'm, i in, in that case, more of a fan of the Marx Brothers than um, the slapstick. It yeah, just which depends. is ironic that you like Munsters more. Right, right. <laughs> you, you know why I like Munsters more? Because I, I like Herman Munster more than I like uh, Gomez Adams. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Another I was always piece. a big fan of both, so... Um, the Sonic live action was interesting. I still haven't watched any of those. I haven't either. I've heard the first one's really good, but, um, I, it's just not, I was never a Sonic person that came along when I was in like college. So I was just never into that. Um, but I played the game obviously, but it just wasn't my thing. Thank you. Corey, who says, this is why I love mega shark versus giant octopus. <laughs> Uh, well, that's it. understandable. Um, shark to puss is a nice, happy medium because uh, it's a shark and an octopus. Dude, did you see the video of the guy? I, were you the one who sent that stupid shit to me? I don't know. 50, arguing 50. that fish aren't animals. 
<laughs> Maybe. Did I send that one to you? I, I sent, think I you sent did. you stuff kind of randomly. Speaking of dumb people. Anyway, yeah. Shark or fish aren't animals. They're fish. Yeah, it's an animal, you dumb son of a bitch. <laughs> like that chick who freaked out because she was called a musician because she plays music. I don't yeah. do magic. I'm not a wizard. <laughs> you don't know me. Oh, anyway, yeah. We got off onto a long tangent there about movies, which I'm always happy to do because I love movies. Yeah. Yeah, I did send you that one. <laughs> I'm fishing right now in Red Dead 2. Oh, don't make me want to go play Red Dead. I fucking love that game. I still think they need to make that into a Netflix series and just follow the script exactly. Don't change anything. So there's like three episodes where he's fishing or trying to find his horse. <laughs> you know, Red Dead 2, I'm, I'm actually glad that got brought up because we have the same arguments in video games that happen in movies. Yeah. One of the main characters in that is a female. And I've never heard, I'm not saying it hasn't happened, but I've never heard anybody out there bitching about Sadie. In fact, Sadie's like a fan favorite. I, uh, is that from Red Dead? It's from Red Dead. At the but she's she's this girl you run into at the very beginning of it. Um, her she'd been living with her husband, uh, and the O'Driscoll gang shows up and kills her husband and takes certain liberties with her. Oh, um, but you are looking for supplies and you find their shack being overrun with the O'Driscolls. You kill them all and you take her back with you because her the house ends up getting burned down, and by the end of the story. She's actually leading the charge to go get the bastard who's responsible for everything. And nobody, nobody is bitching about it because it's well written and it it makes sense. But you, you never hear anybody go, oh, what, what about that? Instead, we hear, all you guys like is big titties in video games. You don't like a girl if she doesn't have big titties in video games. You don't like what I like, so you must be a piece of shit. Mess says spoiler alert. I've already played through the game twice completely and one time halfway through on stream. So if you're just now finding out the story, you should watch more of my game footage. Saying that. Faith has said I would love a Sadie spinoff. I'm not as big a fan of Sadie as most people are. Um I I I like her well enough, but I would have ra- I'd, I'd like a Charles spinoff. Charles is the character that I really like that I don't think got enough attention on there. I left Micah in jail. So you never finished the game, dude? You have to get him out of jail to progress the story. Anyway, Jack. Um, bum, 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 bum. There was something else I wanted to talk about. Did you see Biden today bitching that, that uh, Donald Trump is just sucking up to the rich people? Ugh. So Donald Trump has a, a fundraiser where he raises like $50 million over the last month or so. Yep, and- he doubled what Biden brought in. Yep. And Biden has the balls instead of just keeping his mouth shut. They come out and like, he's out there trying to suck up to rich people while we're doing every major media outlet covered the Clinton Obama Biden fundraiser as a good thing. Yeah. The t- the minimum ticket for that was a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, but no, Trump's got all the rich friends. That's a son of a bitch. Uh, I always leave Micah in jail till I absolutely have to. Me too, because fuck that guy. Sadie wasn't as badass. Her hatred motivated her to become a badass to get her vengeance. Yeah, and the hatred makes sense. I actually was watching. I I was surprised because I've watched a lot of people play the thing. I enjoy watching their reactions because it's such a well-told story. When Sadie gets her revenge on the, the, the one guy, people who played it know what I'm talking about. There's so many people who miss that this girl was repeatedly raped by these people. They think it's just about her husband being killed because they never just come out and tell you what happened to her, you know, because they they expect you to be, you know, intelligent. Mm -hmm. And it's funny to watch these reactors not get that and realize this is what's been done to modern audiences, that you have to hold their hand or they don't pick up on the subtle clues. Yeah, well, people are pretty dumb now, so. Yeah. Since nobody in the game says Sadie was raped, it's like it flies right over their head. It's a really powerful scene when she she finally deals with that guy. And it's one of the, as I watch the reactions, one of the least 
of reacted things. And like, this should be a big moment. What's wrong with you? She fucking kills him. She kills him and enjoys it. Which I understood. See, motivation. Just tell a good story. Set it up so that it's earned. Why do so many writers have a problem with earned moments, Jack? I don't know. Because they think you're stupid and eventually you become stupid because there's no challenge. You're not forced to critically think and people are fucking lazy. Faithless says it's mentioned slash implied before. It's implied. They never actually speak. And and I think it went over a lot of people's heads what happened to that girl. Um, Sounds like Sadie characters, Sharon Stone in The Quick and the Dead. Here's If you play Red Dead Redemption and you know anything about Westerns, you're going to notice a lot of stories are lifted. It's it's a retelling of... There's only so many times you can tell a, a story. And uh, yeah, a lot of them are, are homages. Do you have to play Red Dead Revolver to understand Red Dead Redemption 1 or 2? No. Red Dead Revolver technically happens in a whole different universe. The the There's... um some nods to red dead revolver in red dead uh red dead redemption but uh Har red harlow is not actually a character in that universe ish it is devil fruit zero's birthday jack uh, what devil fruit my friend this one is for you and a one and a two happy, happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you happy, happy birthday, birthday to you, to you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday Devil Fruit. Dear Devil Fruit Zero. Happy, Happy birthday to you. Did I cut out? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, damn it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Hope you have a good one. I really, really do. Um, Enjoy your day. Oh, Jack. I, we can't watch this video, but I want to talk about it. Uh-oh. It's the, the, the chick slapping the guy? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and we definitely can't watch the end of it. So, you know what? We'll watch the first part of it. This says Andy Dick's ex-wife. I don't know who this bitch yeah, is. That's Andy Dick's ex-wife. But we'll watch the just just till she slaps him. Sorry about this. There we go. Um, she was very comfortable doing that, Jack. Yes, it's fairly obvious to me that she has done this before. She's on camera, has no issue with the fact she just slapped the fuck out of this guy. Uh, yep. Have y'all played Gun? I have played Gun. Gun is a good game. Uh, the end of, fell apart, though. I played it for like two hours, so then I had to give it back. So she's dickless. Yes, she is. She slaps him here, and he warns her, like, bitch, do not hit me again. He actually calls her a cunt repeatedly. And tells her, I'm going to pound you if you do that again. And she reaches over to hit him a few times and he stops. Or he puts his hands up and she stops. But then she decides to reach over and really hardly pinch his ear. Yeah. At which point he loses his shit. Yes. Well, he grabs, warned her several times. He did, yeah. And he doesn't actually punch her. He, he basically just grabs her by the hair and yanks her around a little bit. And that's why we're not watching it, because we'd get in trouble for showing that part. I have no doubt we'll get in no trouble for showing this part. No, it's this, just This part's man. fine. She, she just hit a man. Um, Ladies, don't hit men. It's not cool. Uh, and eventually you'll find one that will hit you back, and it won't end well. At the end, she's, she's like, I'm so sorry. Yeah, because she's yanking on her hair. Be sorry before you smack a man in his face. This, By the way, she did get arrested for this. Yeah, she committed domestic violence. And he didn't even full out punch her or anything, which he you know, probably would have been justified in doing. Oh, yeah. And uh, he was fairly light-handed compared to what I thought was going to happen. Well, I saw the reason I, I really want to talk about it is one of the comments to this was please tell me he got arrested too. Um, For what? For being I, the man who strikes back? I guess when um, she got out of the car and he went after her, that would have technically been a new scenario because she was fleeing. 
but we don't know what happened at that point. Yeah, but I I really would have been like not guilty on his case, honestly. What we see here, even if you think he was excessive with how he was pulling her hair and stuff, which he probably was because the car stopped, get out of the car. Um, it was justified. She had literally just assaulted him. It's about it's almost times. it's almost a full minute before or between when she smacks him and when she grabs his ear, which she didn't she had no problem doing. Yeah, she was very comfortable doing it. Imagine that scene reverse, Jack. Uh yeah, that that probably wouldn't have gone over well. Uh real Imagine, quick. Well, uh, do you, do you think that there'd be anybody in the comments going tell me she got arrested too? Uh n- maybe a couple of men's rights guys. And maybe uh, Abba and Preach. But go ahead, you you have a donation. Uh, thank you, Keldrick. She fucked around and found out. Tell Monk to check his slabs. Monk, check your slabs. I will check my slabs. Is it not working this evening? Thank you, Keldrick. Uh, um, like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, and uh, toss us money if you want to. Yes, we're please. Poor. We 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 like to eat. Yeah, we're real poor. Oh my, I have a few here. Um, or is that from yesterday? That's from yesterday. Okay, Keldrick, thank you. The entire point of fundraising fundraisers is to suck up to people with money so they give you money. Doesn't matter if it's political campaigning or church mission trip. What a stupid criticism. Well, the, the, the criticism there isn't that he raised money, talking about Trump and his stuff. Um, it was it was that he was how he's he's only there for the rich people. Yeah, they're framing this I uh, shit you not as Scranton versus um was it Malibu Beach? Is that what it is? Yeah, or uh, Palm Beach. Palm Beach. Palm it's Beach. Malibu or uh, Scranton, Scranton versus Palm Beach. Yeah, you don't get to whine uh, about how much money people are getting from rich people. When you had your team out there telling the press, hey, play this up. And we know that's what happens. Yeah. Did you see the the chick who, I don't know if she's still on Fox or used to be on Fox, who was talking about when she interviewed Biden and she, she was given a script and told she's not allowed to move from the script? Yeah, I saw that. Um, that's crazy. And again, in the comments, somebody puts in there, um, this literally happens with everybody in government. It literally doesn't. It literally doesn't. But it does for some people, yeah, because it's the only way you can get an interview with them is if you agree to only talk about this stuff. And that's when you say, I'm not going to interview you. I'm not giving you editorial control. Yeah, it's weird. Um, But they're happy to do it for him. All right, we got to talk about a PhD, Jack. <laughs> oh, I'm a PhD. It's time for the uh, all the right has is fear mongering. The left never does it. Moment of our night. If you think that during Donald J. Trump's president, the right to protest against policies you disagree with. Um. Uh. You get silenced like your internet's doing. Too. So, oh, there you're back. I know. I was reading that. I had a good flow going, and then it all blanked out on me. I don't know why it's doing this in the last couple of days so bad. It's being it's beginning to piss me off. So if you think that Donald J. Trump's presidency, you'll have the right to protest against policies you disagree with, you're sadly mistaken. He'll his whims will oversee your rights, your opinions, your everything. That's authoritarianism. Hey, Jack, can you remind me who was president during uh, 2020? Um, Leroy Jenkins? No, that's close. It's a good guess. Uh, Mr. Bergu. Can you you tell me why I might be pointing out when she says you won't be allowed to protest who was president during 2020? They want you to believe... These are the same people, by the way, and I don't know if this person specifically, but the kind of people who think like this, who who told you back in 2016 that if you're Mexican, you're going to get deported. If you're gay, you're going to end up in a camp. If you're well, a woman, you get people back in chains. You're going to be in the kitchen. Uh, I can see that projection from space, right? 
say what you want about Donald Trump, but the notion that that you're not going to be allowed to protest, they were happy about the protest. Remember, like, look at how many protests we have against this guy. How many of those did he shut down? The, the left got pissed off that he sent in the feds to defend a federal building that was attacked on a nightly basis for over three months. Actually, didn't we get to over four months with the uh, the federal building there? I believe it was over four months. Every goddamn night. I know. He's not going to allow you to protest anymore. Based we don't get to burn stuff down? I hate this place. It's not even true. These are the same kind of people who told you he's going to have to be dragged kicking and screaming from the White House. Yeah, I, I remember the footage of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's right up there with that P-tape in the, the end bomb video. You can't figure out an actual thing to be pissed off about? You have to make shit up? Apparently they do have to make shit up because they got nothing else. This is this is a doctor. She's a she's a historian, Jack. She actually well, is a doctor. She's she's got a PhD in in history. She's uh, I went and looked her up. She's wrote a lot of books about Alexander Hamilton. She's considered one of the foremost authorities on him. And well, that makes me sad. Now I have to question anything she's ever written because she wrote this. All you have to do is look at the actual history. The the worst you guys can say about Donald Trump and shutting down protest is that they broke up a protest so he could walk across the church that they tried to burn down the night before. Yeah, and even that was uh, getting a little bit out of hand and getting rowdy. It was. And like he used tear gas on him. Yeah. The sure yeah. Jan meme is well placed. It is, isn't it? <laughs> but it's... They literally want you to ignore actual history so that you can go to their craziness and then they'll they'll blame the other side for being the the fear mongerers. I mean, it's the same thing with Donald Trump saying, you know, our democracy will be over. Like, I can't believe he'd say something like that. He said if he loses, democracy will be over. From the same motherfuckers who've been saying it on the nightly news for three years. If we don't stop Trump, our democracy will be over. That's fine to say, apparently. Uh, well, it's okay when they do it because it's true when they say it. Our democracy is literally in danger. Our fragile democracy. Fuck uh, off. But democracy, they mean communism. Oh, it's so insane, man. You can't, I, I just can't believe people are that dumb. I know they are because I run into them all the time. Yeah, but it, it hurts my brain that they're that dumb. I was gonna say your memory's slipping, dude, because we do this show damn near every night. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know they're this but stupid. Usually, okay. Look, this is this is a reality of politics, at least in my lifetime, <laughs> is that you will see the two sides switch on things. Mm -hmm. Where uh, Obama and and taxes is a great example of this because. Under the Bush years, they, there's the tax cut for the rich. And Obama runs on, we got to get rid of this. We got to because it's hurting the country, the tax cut for the rich. And he gets into office and he's like, yeah, I'm not cutting the taxes because it would be a bad thing. to, Or I'm not putting the taxes back in. It'd be a bad thing to do. And suddenly, yeah, uh, uh, raising taxes will be horrible. Suddenly the left who has been bitching that, that taxes got cut for rich people and Obama's going to fix that. Suddenly they were fine without raising taxes again. So that happens, but usually there's a reason, like a big movement like that, like Obama realizing, you know, if he did that, he'd probably crash the economy. Yeah. Not like he, I think he really cared because he's a piece of shit. But. It's never been where literally within a week you have headlines, Donald Trump will end democracy. And then the next week it's, Donald Trump says democracy will end if, if he's not elected. What the fuck is wrong with him? Why does he hate America? I've never seen it so whiplash. I mean, it, it actually hurts my brain trying to keep up with it sometimes. It's like, oh, I shit, I, I don't know what side you guys are on this week. Could you help me out? 
I mean, the election deniers, the, the left's election denial goes back a long, long time, but it's huge starting in the 2000 election because Bush won. Nobody should ever should ever question an election, Jack. Al Gore won the popular vote. And then now these same people who years and years later, to almost two decades later, still talking about that, still questioning the election, suddenly we can never question elections. It, that is the end of democracy if you question an election. It's, it's fucking mind-numbing. It really is. Uh, it's because the left doesn't believe in reality. It, they believe in winning. And they know they have the bully pulpit, so they don't they don't have to be consistent. Yeah, it's they why... also have like no real honor, so yeah, they don't mind cheating and lying to get what they want. And frankly, we're seeing more and more of that from the right, which is why I do pre preach principles so often. Mm -hmm. um, you got to have principles, and so many people don't. Uh, the big argument today on Twitter, Jack, was over abortion. I don't know if you saw that shit going on. No, I haven't been online much today. I was super busy. Well, Lindsey Graham comes out and he's he's going to be putting forth a new bill to ban abortion after 15 weeks nationally. And Donald Trump came out and said, Lindsey Graham needs to knock this shit off. Let the states decide it. That's what, what we were fighting for in Roe. Yeah. And you have Hassan on one side saying that... Um, what would he say? This just shows that people don't actually believe that life begins at conception. I'm like, but Lindsey, Lindsey Graham's literally not all people. Well, he's kind of fat, but he's not all people. He just looks like he ate a few of them. Donald Trump specifically mentions the 10th Amendment for why Roe should be this way. And I was watching Politibunny's feed where people are like, Donald Trump's lying. About what? It's his opinion on the Tenth Amendment, which, by the way, he's right about. Yeah, he's at even murder laws should not be on the federal books, Jack. It, it was never supposed to be that way. Well, a lot of that stuff came about because Woodrow Wilson wanted to lock up a lot of people, and yeah. the progressives thought, "Hey, this is a great way to do things." If if we're going strictly by the Constitution, half the federal laws we have shouldn't exist. Yeah. Because it's not a power Congress has. The, yeah, the, powers like... of, the powers of Congress are laid out pretty clearly. I, granted, they have the Commerce Clause in there, which is a little bit uh, iffy. That, Yeah, that's a bullshit thing they always trot out. Is, oh, so we use it under the Commerce Clause. Yeah, the that's commerce, crap. The Commerce Clause and the General Welfare Clause are the yeah. two that are most abused by Congress. Yeah, just as the ATF. But because of those, um, we, we live in the world we do now. And a lot of people do not understand that it's not the way it's supposed to be. If California wants to make it so that murderers only have to go to jail for five years, California should be able to do that. I think it's wrong, but I don't have to live there. The whole purpose was that we don't all live in the same area, so we shouldn't all have to live by the same laws and values. We, we came together. This is where, while I think uh, Razor Fist got some stuff wrong in his, his Lincoln video that he did, it's undeniable that the country changes after the Civil War. The federal government just takes on powers it never should have had. Um, general welfare is not a clause. It's just a descriptive phrase um, that does not grant power to the... Uh, it, it actually says that they're allowed. To, the The clause is that um, they can provide for the, or that they have to provide for the general welfare of the public. I think is the exact wording. Um, it, it is, and it, it's it's seen as the as a clause. It's in the. Um, uh, is it actually listed as one of the eight powers of Congress, or is it the next line? I'm trying to remember now. It's been a while since I read. But the powers of Congress are laid out in, I, th I think it's a, a specific eight things that they can do. One of them, like uh, raising a, an army when necessary, um, having the Navy, because at the time, Navy was much more important than it is these days uh, to begin with. And and that is the government's job to protect that. And yeah, these days it's... Uh,
Hi, everybody. Staying sexy out there. With the um, the decision for marijuana back in the day, what, maybe a decade ago, where a guy was growing weed for himself and he challenged them and they're like, no, because you could sell it. They use the interstate commerce clause for that. You could sell it across state lines. So yeah, this this we can uphold this law. That's fucking retarded. It's not what it was meant for. But I mean, they used it with alcohol as well. I mean, it's just the government getting their hands into everything. Yeah, which they like to do because they like power. Yep, yep. Anyway, um, bum, 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 bum. what else did I have on the agenda? I think that's everything I had that I can that I that I really wanted to talk about. That doesn't mean there's not other things I want to talk about, Jack. It's kind of weird the way my brain works with the show. There's things like I this I have to talk about, and then others just like ah, if I get time, I'll bring that up. My favorite is we we go we do the show, and at the end, we had been ranting and raving about some nonsensical tangent for like an hour and a half, and you're like, oh, I really wanted to talk about this super important news article, and we well, both have done that. <laughs> The thing is, I, there's so many stories that I read throughout the day that are important, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean that they're necessarily heavily on my mind. Yeah. And a lot of times it is a really important topic. That's just there's, funny. Have you seen that that kid who's going around trying to pretend he's a victim because he got arrested at a protest? Yeah, I passed at Vanderbilt. <laughs> Retard. This kid gets arrested at Vanderbilt. Friends, they were of of terrorists. I'm not calling them Palestinians; they're terrorists. And he gets arrested, and he said, "I got arrested for doing nothing wrong." He was arrested for assaulting a security guard. Yeah. I got arrested at a peaceful protest. Well, not that peaceful. I mean, it might have been a peaceful protest, but you weren't peaceful. Jack, yeah, if, they, a th- if a thousand people are all together peacefully protesting and one guy goes up and punches a, a cop, it doesn't mean it's not a peaceful protest. It means he assaulted a cop. Yeah, it means he's not peaceful. Yeah. And you don't then get to hide behind the people who were being peaceful. This is why when it comes to January 6th, I always try to put the caveat on there. The people who assaulted police officers that day, I have no problem with them going to jail. Uh, provided the police officer didn't fire first, which I, I realize there's some of that. But even then, I mean, some of those guys just went crazy. Some of those guys weren't around any police officers who fired anything at them. They were just violent shitbags. Most of that protest was absolutely peaceful. Yep. And that th- those guys being assholes doesn't change that it was a peaceful protest. Oh, uh, yes, it does, monkey. Charlottesville was all Nazis. It was all Nazis, every one of them. There were there were every not, one of them. Not good people on both sides. Yeah. <clears throat> Which I agree with because one side was leftist. Well, you mean communists? Yeah, those aren't people. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have that guy. I saw some guy today whining because what's that dude's name? I gotta find that one. Uh, um weird talk to about Pearly. No, no, not that dude, a different dude. Oh, oh, my bad. So this this Long-time Israeli prisoner, uh, Walid Dakwa, D-A-Q-Q-A. I don't know if I'm saying it or not, or saying it right or not. He died in an Israeli prison, Jack. Yes. Uh, he was a Aww. philosopher and scholar monkey. Oh. He was a political prisoner. Oh. Oh, no. Who was in jail because he tortured and murdered an Israeli soldier. No, he was just a writer and philosopher monkey. You don't know. You haven't been to college. He was originally given life in prison, um, and instead they commuted the sentence to like 37 years, I think is what it was. And he ended up having to spend an extra two years, or it it got extended by two years because he was caught with a cell phone where he was speaking with his family that he wasn't supposed to have. Oopsie. Oopsie. Uh, But he died the other day, and... um, Walid Daka, a scholar and writer, was murdered today in an Israeli prison complex due to medical negligence. 
rooted in structural racism and systemic denial of human rights and violation of international standards on the treatment of detainees. Uh, he he was a murderer who died in prison where he did, belonged. I, I have no problem with that guy dying in prison. And I am so tired. Why are all the left, why are all of their heroes shitbags? Because they're shitbags and they hang around with other shitbags. So of course they have heroes that are shitbags. This man murdered somebody. He wasn't there as a political prisoner. Uh, he didn't well, die it, due to med medical negligence. He'd been in that prison for over 37 years. Yeah, if he died from medical negligence, he would have died after like a couple years tops. The The guy was a shitbag. Fuck him. I, I said this on Twitter, and I do mean it. I hope I'm wrong about religion and that he is burning in a hell somewhere. Yeah. I hope his last day sucked. I hope he was in pain that even I can't imagine, Jack. Right? Uh, don't care about that one. Although I do think it's funny, um, with the eclipse, there were a lot of people upset today, Jack. Because they spent big money to go watch the eclipse. And then couldn't see it because of the clouds. <laughs> yeah, I posted a, a, a reposted somebody from Niagara Falls bitched about that. Oh, yeah, that yeah. So yeah, it was a little cloudy here, but that went away pretty fast, and we had a beautiful day for it. Dude, we had crystal clear skies. It was yeah. wonderful. Uh, it was. I I got some really good views of it, and we got to see it. Dad missed it. He wasn't really wanted to watch it, but he had to go to the hospital again. Oh, damn. I hope he's all right. Uh, it's not really. Um, oh, that sucks. Yeah, so that's something we dealt with today, too. But my sister got to go outside at the hospital to look at the eclipse. I was out at a cemetery at the time because there were five other cars at the place I was at. They were nowhere near us. We had the entire front half of the cemetery to ourselves. Nice. It was great. Uh, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. Got to see the uh, beautiful sky. Ohio was awesome for this today. Apparently New York, not so much. Uh, Matt says Europe will have a 90% eclipse in 2026. Did you see uh, Dankula talking about this? He said, uh, no, I didn't see the eclipse. He goes, I live in Scotland. Uh, a sunless sky is not something I'm, I'm shocked by. Yeah, I mean, uh, does he even know what the sun is? <laughs> they live in darkness all the time. It's why they're so weird. Yeah, it's a cloud cover. I mean, they're used to the color gray. Oh, excuse me. That's nice, monkey. What I did? Did I do? Are, uh, am I being really nice, or are you saying that? Or is that sarcastic? I can never tell. I can never tell. Eh, it's hard to say. Um. No, there were uh, some people got to see more eclipse than others too. It oh, only yeah. lasted for like a minute and a half here, I think. So, but we had we got to see the full eclipse, which is really difficult for a lot of people to get. I guess some people in Texas could only see like a partial eclipse. I didn't get to see a full eclipse. We ours was uh, rated at like ninety four percent. Got to see most of it. Uh, there's still just a tiny sliver of it that you could st you could see. Oh, yeah. Well, it was still cool to watch, here. though. And oh yeah, yeah, it was if, a lot of fun. If this was ancient times, Jack, I would be like burning a witch right now. <laughs> <laughs> not only does the sun darken, and that my my son described it as like somebody screwed with the saturation. Yeah, everything takes on that look. But we also had a windstorm pick up right as it's coming through. And the wind just starts blowing really hard and it's a cold wind and it's getting dark and the sun's going away. Like, I need Ooh. to find a witch to burn. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to take pictures and that was really hard to try and find the sun with a telephoto lens. Uh. <laughs> I accidentally looked at the sun like twice. I looked at the I did look at it today. I was um I went to take the glasses down, but I hadn't turned my head down first. Oh yeah, that'll do it. Yep. And yeah. 
Whoopsie. Yeah, I was like, I was running three cameras at the time. And so I'm sitting right next to one of the video cameras. And I'm going to have to mute all the audio because it's just me muttering and swearing the entire <laughs> time for like two fucking hours. Uh, Enrico saw a ghost. Oh. How do you see the ghost? Well, we were at a cemetery. I, I oh, took, gotcha. Uh, I took my sister in law, and she went. She insisted on bringing the dog. I'm like, all right, what? Well, I don't think that's a good idea, but you know, whatever. So we took him in. Uh, he starts barking, and, and she assumed he was barking at some kids because there were a couple kids wandering around the cemetery, but they were way in the back. And I, I mean, this is a, a fairly sizable cemetery where pretty close to the front there's nobody in the entire front half to three quarters and he was barking in a direction where nobody was parked because he's barking at the street i was like that's weird so rico saw a spooky ghost and a rooster crowed right around that same time huh because that was during the totality i'm telling Good you man times. there were dark forces at work tonight we don't know it yet, those. but there was there was a black hole open somewhere in Earth. They were running CERN. Yeah. So thank you, John. Nice you got to go to the cemetery with family. Yeah. Uh uh, there's a kind of a hidden away cemetery that most people don't go to because it's full. I don't think they've put anybody in there in like 20 years. And it's I out think... in the middle of fucking nowhere. Most people have no idea this place exists, except for the guy that mows it and the dude that lives next door with the chickens and the big dogs who look like Cujo. I think James is is, is a bit behind. He says, Kelly Marie Tran. Isn't that Rose? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Backscan says, go back when it's dark for some ghost hunting. I, uh, I, I, want I, I, hmm? what? I don't like being in cemeteries, though, even in the daytime, Jack. I tend to trip over things a lot, and all that stuff is shin high. So <laughs> there, there's this one really cool uh, headstone out there that has an angel on top. Like it's it's a good four foot tall angel on top of a headstone. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get that in the shot with the eclipse, and I couldn't do it because the sun was in the wrong position for it. But that's why we went to that specific one. That and I knew nobody was going to be out there. And it turned out there were five vehicles. Oh, I think one of them was actually just there to lay flowers. So it was pretty awesome. But the, like the people in my area were all out at the parks and stuff like that. So I was really kind of worried about the traffic. And some of the main thoroughfares were packed full of people. So this was a big deal for ohio so yeah i was just like trying to find the most out of the way place i could that i could get to easily and i knew where it was so i didn't have to navigate anything i got i was able to watch it from my porch it was wonderful um i live in the middle of nowhere though it was even here jack where we weren't getting the full eclipse it was insane the library was giving out the the little glasses and they had to put up yeah. signs and, and Facebook posts. Like we don't have any more. <laughs> Everybody and their mother like was out getting them, which is cool. I mean, I, I like little events like this that bring us all together. Yeah. I mean, um, one of the things about the Midwest is there's not a lot to do sometimes. So you have these kind of events come along and people go completely nuts for them. Yeah. And it can be really fun. Uh, this is way better than hands across America. Cause this is fun. But, yeah, there was uh, an actual I, eclipse. Yeah, I took uh, the the a couple pairs of the glasses and mm -hmm. cut the lenses out and put them over the video camera lens. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that way, because you could buy filters for your regular DSLRs, and I have one for my, my photography camera, but I don't for the video cameras. So I, I adapted them that way, and I put one on my cell phone, so I could try to take pictures that way. And overall, it worked out pretty well. Only one of them really kind of looked like shit. So I, I still didn't get a lot of really good footage. But I'll show you a couple of the pictures I took it when we get offline. But uh, I thought it was pretty cool. It was a lot of fun. It was a good experience. 
Oh, God, this argument again. There's a lot of women out there right now upset. I'm sorry, I don't mean to change the subject. I, I just see a post from Weibo that Hammer had responded to. Uh-oh. Um, Uh-oh. There's a big argument going on because it was Charlie Kirk, of all people, <laughs> who kicks off this argument about women not being attractive at after 30-ish. After, after your prime reproductive years. Yeah, when they start getting all wrinkly. And this guy asks, women, does anyone deny that fertility for women decreases on average with age? It's not on average with age. It absolutely decreases with age. Um, is this offensive? And we've said the offensive part comes with the implication uh, that often follows. Women have so much more to offer than would be than just their eggs and womb. Parenthood isn't for everyone. Some people have different callings but still want companionship. And that's fair, but that's not the norm. Get a dog, die alone. I mean, but that, that's not the norm. The the norm is people are looking to get married to start a family. And that's that's part of the equation is having kids. If you're out there and you're looking to start a family and you're a 50 year old woman, it's probably not going to happen for you. Yeah. Even with the best medical science, uh, it's probably not going to happen for you. If you're a woman looking to have kids, you probably should do it in your 20s and early 30s. Because then you you don't have the blue gumball. How many women have started waiting to have kids and now we got blue gumballs all over the place? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, special people out there. And they're like, it's the vaccines. No, it's the old eggs. (laughs) That's your dead eggs, bitch. You ever crack an egg and it stinks? That's because it went bad. That's what you just had. Yeah, that's and how hippies look, are made. You, your your eggs are probably fine till thirty five ish, and that's when they you might want to maybe not have kids. And I, there's going to be some. My mom was forty. I can tell. I know. <laughs> yeah, uh, those are outliers, though. Um, but the norm is that that's geriatric pregnancy. You're you're really running a lot of health risks for you and that kid. Yeah, and it doesn't mean that no woman has any value beyond having babies but if you're looking to start a family as many men are when they're looking to settle down you're probably looking for somebody who can you know have babies have your babies yeah some of them bring their own uh and that's let's face it a lot of guys aren't gonna do that yeah it doesn't mean women have no value beyond that, but it, it's it it's not wrong to point out that, yes, you lose your fertility and your looks. Most guys lose their looks, too. Not all, you know, we don't all look like me, Jack. I'm still a pretty man, almost 50. Most guys my age look like shit. That's true. That's true. A lot of guys start falling apart in their 40s. Their Their face literally looks like it's starting to melt. It could, it's the same thing that happens to women. We just accept it more with men. They still look like shit if you're being honest about it. Yeah. Nobody's going to be mad at me for saying that. If I said that about women, they'd be like, how dare you be a misogynist? Oh, you're bigger. Oh, my God. It's just funny to me that there's actually an argument about whether or not people who want to have a family want to have a family with somebody who can't have kids. <laughs> Yeah, what kind of family are you going to have? A fuzzy one that meows at you every few minutes? Yeah. Oh, look at our fur babies. It's not. Uh, it's not a baby. It's a cat. It's a dog. It's 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 an animal. You retard. And if, except Rico, if, he's a people. Look, I I spoil the shit out of my kitten. I love her very much. I carry her around like a baby, Jack. Aww. But she's a cat. She's not my fur baby. She's not on par with my daughter or my granddaughters. I love her very, very much, but she's a cat. Don't tell her I said that. She gets mad. Yeah. Guys, we're going to wrap up here. I don't know if I'm going to do a game stream. I did one yesterday, Jack, and it was at the end of that that I had to decide I wasn't doing the main show because I got this pain in my back that I had to stop sitting. Do you, do you know how manly it feels to be like, oh man, I can't sit anymore? 
<laughs> ah, welcome to uh, late middle age, buddy. Fuck. Um, then you so, get up and your knees hurt from <laughs> sitting too long. <laughs> if you want to watch some game stuff, go watch the yesterday's video over on Twitch. Um, anything you want to? Oh wait, thank you guys for coming. I almost forgot to thank the audience. Oh, yeah. I would have remembered because I'm very thankful for them. Thanks for going with me on that. Thank you guys for uh, coming and hanging out. Thank you for the donations. You guys are so, so kind. And it's tax season, Jack. We just did our tax. Excuse oh. me, our taxes. Yeah, mine are brutal. <sighs> mine was not was not fun. But um, we understand you guys are going through that too. And the economy and everything. Groceries costing three times what these. You guys are awesome. And we really do appreciate that you you help us out the way you do. Jack, anything you want to show? Uh, no, I got nothing. Uh, thanks for the donations. Like Monkey said, it really helps out. It's how we're paying the bills. And uh, you guys are awesome. Stay sexy out there. Uh, like I said, not doing anything else tonight. I'm going to go rest and and try to take it easy, Jack. Uh, that's cool. So everybody duck and cover because I'll probably fall asleep. I'm tired as shit. <laughs> I did stay up most of the day, the day Jack. I was, I was doing humanity a favor. Yeah, that's why CERN and the Eclipse didn't team up and destroy us with the black hole sun. I did not go to sleep until after the Eclipse had passed. So uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a giver, man. I'm a giver. A pleasure as always, dude. Yeah, I was glad to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Tomorrow we'll talk about some more idiots. I hope you join us. We love you, and we'll see y'all next time. Bye, everybody. I should sing a four-minute song to get this to two hours, but no.